So I'd like to show you folks how this machine works. And this here was my original idea. You see I got four generators there. I've got a motor right here. I've got a three-phase motor right there. Got an additional electrical input right there. It's all connected to a live earth ground, which is the same thing I got here. Here's my ground wire right here. It goes all the way over. It goes all the way over to the earth ground out, outside. And I've got a this MOV hooked up to it. You know, pop pop sparks and introduce electricity into the system. And if I turn this six volt switch on. See, I got this little gear reduction motor attached to it. Yeah, I got an LED light to tell me that there's electricity running through there. But what this half of the circuit does is it feeds electricity to this transformer right here. And that transformer goes to a, a bridge rectifier right there. And the bridge rectifier cycles electricity this direction on one half and then on another half it cycles electricity the other direction and because of the way I've got it set up this bridge rectifier gives all of the energy of this battery away to the system over on this side so this battery just steadily goes dead and it gives away all of its energy over here so that's one part of the system and the second part of the system is Let me start this up. Yeah, you see there's, there's my Atherton motor right there spinning away. This here is going to generate static electricity once I get the once I get the felt pad and the wire in place. And it'll feed electricity back into the system. But you see this this row of generators right here. I know you probably can't see it in the camera, but this generator on the end, it's spinning. This generator right here on the end is spinning along with the rest of them because it has electricity coursing through it. You see this motor right here? It's spinning. That generator right there, you see the wires come out. There's the red one right there. It goes right over. shut that off. That was good enough. So you can see that uh, that that red wire goes right over to here and this is another uh, motor controller and I made a change in this design from the other video that I just posted a few days ago. Because at that time I had this in there and this here is a potentiometer and I had that in place of, of that unit right there. But I couldn't, couldn't reach the, the full potential of voltage that I wanted with that in place. So I changed it with this right here. And it turned out to be a better thing because I was able to connect it up better the way I wanted to. Now these generators right here, they're all in series with each other. They lead into this right here. Um, the batteries, which right now I'm using a 6-volt battery, but I have this 12-volt 12 volt battery system that powers this and you can see there's a there's a 12 volt electrical lead that goes right to, to that same spot too so that 12 volts will drive this system once I perfect the belts on it um, so yeah that, that's kinda how it works and when when this machine is running these generators produce electricity that replaces some of the loss that the, the batteries suffer during uh, running a load and stuff like that. And it doesn't totally compensate for all of it. Um, now if this machine was in a car, you know, if this machine was in a car, slowly you know, rolling down the street or whatever, I would have momentum to help uh, 
turn the generators and extenuate the energy being produced. But because this is on a flat circuit board just laying on a table, uh, what I've done is I've added these two 12 volt solar, solar arrays to it to uh, produce energy that uh, my lack of motion isn't producing. And that's the reason why I put these in here. Um, it's not, not because uh, this system can't run without you know, help from you know, solar energy. That's not the reason. The reason is this, this machine is running without momentum. And because I, I, I'm not using momentum to try and make this loco circuit, um, I'm trying to uh, come up with an alternative means of uh, substituting the momentum with you know another form of energy so that's all this is all about and if I reach the right balance uh, this machine is going to take off like a rocket and I haven't quite got that balance right yet and you know I'm still putting it together just two days ago I didn't even have this built but look look what I did with it and it kind of looks like a rifle scope mount almost but uh, that's gonna work really good you just got that little Atherton motor down inside there. The generators are doing their job. This half of the circuit is definitely doing its job. Now, on this drawing right here, you can see I have the mechanical conversion of energy coming from this uh, three-phase motor going all the way back to the first generator over here. And that's actually, you know, the, the, the two wires, the two wires that come from this generator right here are supposed to go right over, right over here to this motor. And uh, that'll excite that motor into um, running even harder. And so because that, that kind of becomes a closed loop of, you know, momentum, energy, momentum, energy, you know, there, because there's, you know, there's a, a cross pattern of momentum and energy going on there. Uh, it should become a self-sustaining cycle. But because, because I'm not using a rolling car or whatever, I have to help that along with some other form of energy. In this case, I'm using solar. But I would like to add, a, you know, like a, a wind, you know, just a, a wind... Um, uh, wind generator onto this also and uh, you know so that would be truly a triplicated system you know have have wind have solar to uh, extend the lack of momentum then have the batteries and uh, the generators going and all that stuff I mean, that that to me would be a, a good start at, at having a locomotive circuit that uh, once you start it up it doesn't have any need to shut off you can just keep running but as I said before achieving the balance of you know forces and powers there is, is going to be a difficult task especially using pre-made components you know where where none of the mathematic ca uh, mathematical calculations have been made to make the whole entire, entire system uh, work to, together as a cohesive unit. I'm using all separate pieces that were, you know, designed to work with other units, but they weren't designed to make this machine. So that, that, may, that, that may have implications later on. But yeah, for right now, this thing has turned out really good. As you can see, all the systems worked. I just showed you that all the systems are working on it. You know, the generator system, that whole entire thing is working. That operates this machine right here. Yep, I'm showing you how I'm introducing additional electricity into the system with, you know, static and with the uh, uh, MOVs, you know, the molar, molar volt uh, type crystals. I think that's a and this is a really exciting and, and uh, uh, important way to add electricity to an electrical system is to get it from a from an MOV. 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm doing some, uh, you know, a lot of investigating into that. Yeah. So one thing about making machines like this is you got to be really careful because you get these little machine killers like I don't know if you can see it or not that little piece of copper wire is shining right there it's just laying right down there in my machine if you pick this thing up and turn it to one side it can tumble into something like like my, my solar charging controller right here this is a solar charger controller right here it, it operates on 10 to 24 volts and it has circuits underneath of it and if that wire gets underneath of it it can kill the whole entire system so I call them machine killers so if you're building stuff like this you gotta be real careful about that and I've soldered all the joints you know you can see the solder joint right there I burned it into the even though this is stainless steel I, I burned the solder into it real good you can see that I guess I got an absolute good bond right there and so any place that I soldered to the contactors or whatever, I, I made sure there was a really good bond. So this whole entire thing is put together pretty good. All these components are new. You know, there's a new, new generators, new motors. This motor is brand new. All these are brand new. This is all brand new. That's brand new. You know, all these, all these components are new. I, I got, you know, like these... These LEDs and stuff like that resistor right there, that zero ohm resistor that I put in right there. Other components like there's a there's a switching diode right there. It's a one-way diode. It only lets electricity flow one direction. I put that in. So this circuit's pretty tight. And I just showed you that it, run, it runs this motor. It runs this motor. I, I got to work on these belts. It started to slip there for some reason. So I'll have to fix that. I did a pretty good job on this. I made these little grease caps for the ends. And yeah, they have grease inside of them. The bearing of my Atherton motor, the, the main, or the, the, the axle shaft, the sh axle shaft bearing. Sticks out, it sticks out into these cups and it just kind of swims in that grease all the time. So it, it's a, a frictionless, frictionless motion on the bottom end. I'm working on getting it friction, frictionless on the top. And then sooner or later, I'm going to start running this thing right here. This is my three phase motor. Move that light right there. And as you can see, when you turn it, I got an LED light on there that shows you that it's producing electri electrical current. So once I turn this on, um, this this little generator right here will produce 24 volts at about 30 watts. So it's a it's a really powerful generator, even though it's so small. I mean, it's a tiny little thing. But if you spin it at the 6,000 RPMs where it's supposed to go, um, it'll produce a lot of energy. And it, it'll operate this whole entire unit just about. So I'm really interested in getting this up and running. Still working out the kinks in it though. I have to align this thing up yet. It still isn't lined up right though. The belt keeps walking off of it still. So these are kind of delicate things. I'll get it figured out though. So I got the springs on it already. So it's just a little spring kind of platform that tensions the belt, but I got to get it lined up right so that it drags the belt the right direction. So yeah, I'm just working out the little bugs on all this little stuff, and once I get um, once I get everything worked out, this machine is going to be really really amazing. And I followed this diagram almost exactly when I built it, you know, like this generator array. That's right here, you know, it's those generators. This right here, this right here is actually this this unit right here, you know. This 
three phase motor is this three three phase motor right here and it goes I showed you where it goes there's a wire that goes right straight to that motor right there and then it comes back to this generator and all it does is raise the voltage at that generator and make it to make it run to uh, um, yeah yeah to make it run harder it kind of introduces a surge of electricity into it and that, that puts it in a hyper state and once you, once that's achieved then the, the machine will pretty much maintain itself until uh, the circuit is broken somehow or a component breaks I had a problem with this right here I, I bypassed this switch right here I, I couldn't the con there was a problem with the contact right here so I took the wire off this wire was right here on the black so I took this wire and moved it to right here. Moved it on the opposite side of the switch and just connected the two wires together. So I gotta do something about that.